Joining us now on America's Forum is climatologist and former NASA expert and author of the book, Dark Winter, John Casey. Thanks so much for joining us here on America's it's Forum. It's a pleasure to be here. So everyone's talking about global warming, but your book focuses on global cooling? Exactly. Global cooling is, uh, has begun. Global warming ended many years ago. And the new cold era of this global cooling is caused by a 206 year cycle of the sun. This is very important. This hasn't happened since basically at the founding of our country. And now here it is coming back again. The sun is cutting back on the energy by which it warms us. And now it's going to get cold for three decades. So you're saying what's happening right now in some parts of the country that are experiencing temperatures 20 to 40 degrees lower than usual, they need to get used to it, is that what you're saying? Absolutely, and in fact, the spate of 100-year cold temperature records we've seen and the record cold temperature that we had last winter, not a surprise at all, it's right on schedule. So when you say cold, what do you mean by cold? Like, how cold are we talking about? We're talking about uh, cold that's going to be so cold that no one alive today has ever experienced it, number one. Number two, it's going to be so cold that it's going to start damaging our crops. And let's talk about the crops. Real problems with the crops. Let's talk about that because more and more now we're using such uh, crops as corn mm -hmm. for fuel, but you're saying that's a bad idea. It's going to be a, a very bad idea. Once the corn crops begin to get damaged along with the wheat and the soybeans and other northern grain crops, we're going to see a substantial loss not only in business but in food stuff. The ripple effect into the energy sector is because of the ethanol produced by corn. We're now putting 10% corn-fed fuel in our cars and trucks. What happens when we lose 30% or 50% of our corn crop, or in some years at the bottom of this cold cycle, possibly all of our corn crop? What do we do then for fuel? So hearing that, are you saying things like the Keystone Pipeline may not be a bad idea after all? It is a great idea. We need to uh, recognize and I believe someday historians will look back on what we're doing now using food for fuel that's an incredible concept but we've gotten used to it now so when the food becomes a higher priority than the fuel we'll be very happy that the Keystone pipeline got started hopefully soon and that we have other <coughs> fuel sources by then well some people have even speculated that one of the reason why Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine had nothing to do with what we think it has to do with, but because of natural resources. Do you agree with that? I think there's a good reason to give that some credence. For example, uh, it's historically always been a need for the uh, Russians, the Soviet Union in prior times, to have a warm water port. Well, what was the first thing Putin did? He took Ukraine, literally went in and took it from uh, took Crimea from the Ukraine, and the Crimea Peninsula of Ukraine is where the warm water ports are down there. Next, we see this land invasion, which even this week is more intense than it was before. And what does his interest lie in Ukraine? Well, the interest could be the same interest the Russians have had for hundreds of years, the wheat that's grown in Ukraine when they can't grow wheat in Russia because of the cold. Let's talk about the president right now. The president is pushing for executive action on global warming, and he just did a deal with China. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, from a political standpoint, with the new Congress mm -hmm. under Republican GOP control, it's dead on arrival. The only way he can do anything with that agreement is by executive order with new EPA regulations. That's also going to be a new battlefield with the GOP controlled government. On the other hand, if you look at what he's doing this for, probably to placate the environmental arm of the Democratic Party, but also to establish for him in the remaining two years of his mm -hmm. tenure some legacy that he can go back on, some legacy or platform for the new Democratic presidential candidate in two years, some success. On the other hand, if you look at what the Chinese got out of it, they got everything and more. They now can produce as many coal-fired plier plants as they want to produce for the next 16 years. Now, John, in your book, you talk about that this could go on, this cold spell could go on for 30 years, that we're going to see record temperatures right. that no human in this lifetime has ever experienced. Knowing that, what should we be doing to prepare for that? The basic steps of preparation start with number one, get informed. Find out why it's happening, 
uh, via my book, Dark Winter, or other sources, and there are many scientists like me, other climate researchers around the world, who are telling their own country's leaders and people, get ready for the new cold era. The Russians especially. Uh, we can go into that, but step number one is... But do you informed. think they are preparing? Oh, I have no doubt. Okay. The Russian scientists, uh, different than our U.S. scientists, are free to talk to the mainstream media. The mainstream media in Russia routinely interviews them on TV, prints uh, big articles about their findings. There's no shortage of science on the new cold era in the Russian uh, government right now. So they know what's coming. I suspect they are planning, and the Ukraine could be an example of that, what they're doing down there. Um, so step number one is get informed. Step number two, mm -hmm. we need to understand what happened the last time right. so that we can anticipate what may happen. Very interesting conversation. And for our viewers out there, a reminder that John Casey's book, Dark Winter, is now available on Amazon and at bookstores everywhere to get your copy of Dark Winter for free. All you have to do is go to Newsmax.com slash Dark Winter and read about our special offer. Very interesting. Why well, everyone's talking about global warming. Here's somebody saying we're going to see the coolest temperatures we've ever seen in the next 30 years. Maybe I've been around too long, but when, when I started uh, competitive speech in high school, back in the days before, before computers, you'd have a clip file. You'd go to the magazines and clip all the stories. And Newsweek right. in 1973 had a cover story about global cooling, a next mm -hmm. ice age. So went, aha. And, well, it's interesting to hear what, uh, what John Casey has to say, what the geopolitical impacts are, especially with what Russia may be up to in the Ukraine, right. with what's at stake there in terms of corn and stuff. Miranda, great report. When we come back, we'll talk about amnesty. But right now, a news